started right. I got my coffee. Got my dirty coffee cup. And it must be from that hole in my lip. I don't know. All right. Something real quick that I wanted to uh, share with you. Um, the community tab on our, on our uh, YouTube pages where you can write an article. Well, what I plan on doing is uh, every time I learn something cause about growing this YouTube channel, I'm going to list what I learned in there, what, what I have learned, what I've been taught. I'm a, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put in there what I've been teached. Yeah. I'm going to put what I have discovered in an article and I'm going to build that up through the year. At the end of the year, I'm looking at how people are reacting to it. And this is a good idea. I'm going to take, the articles out, the parts out, put it together, and I'm going to make an ebook out of it. Boom, ebook. So, story today. My wife and I used to have a a large preschool. Okay, and uh, they come out with these uh. They'd let us come on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. We could bring the preschoolers to, well, she could bring the preschoolers to uh, to the movies. There would be a kid movie playing. It would be like a buck a kid. So during the summer, and we had preschool daycare, we'd have kids from, you know, little babies all the way to 10, 11 years old. So they'd have these movies be a buck a kid. God, can they not work on crap up there? I don't know. Tell me if you can hear this. They're still grinding. A couple big trees fell um, over here. Now, when you build a booth, I can't keep everything out. But what I can, what I can do is I can make it dead in here. I can keep the echo down so that. Uh, the voice is a little more crisp, a little, a little better. My siblings, my siblings are a little rough, but uh, with this microphone, I use it because I dig it. That's the only reason why. And it's a sure, I mean, it's a good microphone, but it's a sure, uh, uh, a 55. It's like the old, they call it the old Elvis mic. And I just, I like using it. I think it's cool. It makes, it makes me feel cool. I don't know. But anyways, back to the, the story. So every once in a while, I'd have a blast because I would jump on board and I would go. And we'd take a couple of teachers. And we had, and this one time we had about, we had about, I don't know, 10, 11 kid boys with us. So we went, we seen this movie. Oh, How to Train Your Dragon was the movie. So we go to the movie theater, we go in there, and it worked out great with me being there because I didn't go all the time. I just, every once in a while, I would show up on my free time, and I played my beard a lot because usually I have it in the, the rubber band thingy. But now, yeah, anyways, I let it be free. So we we go to the movies, we're going to the movies. We check the movie out. Well, we're all done. I grab hold of all the boys. I go, hey, you guys, before we drive back, let's everybody use the bathroom. Now, I got like 11 boys with me, okay? Now, there's another female teacher with me to help me out, but we're going to go use the men's bathroom. So I've got two of the kids that are 11 and 12, and here's how we set it up. They go in to use the bathroom. I send the 11 and the 12 year old in first. Okay. 
then the younger ones start going in. Remember, they're not little, little. They're they're seven to, you know, 12. Most of them are seven, eight years old. They got those little, little urinals for them. So I send the 11 and 12 year old in first. They go in there. They do their thing. They wash their hands. And what the, the plan is, is then, then I'll start sending the other ones in. And I got them lined up in a wall on the outside. And they go, and if they need any help, well, they usually they don't need any help, but they go, they do their business. The 11 to 12 year old are gonna make sure they wash their hands. That's how we got it dialed. I just stand outside and wait, make sure nobody takes a kid. So, got them all lined up, 11 to 12 year old go in. They do their business, they flag to me, and the way it is, the wall's here, the wall's like behind me, the door to the bathroom's here, and it's it's big. But I can see to the sinks. So the 11, 12-year-old send them over. I see them. They see me. They wash their hands. They come over to me. I, I second the, the notion. They tell them to wash their hands. I see them wash their hands. Then they come out. Now, I've got a lady that's not with me that's standing over here. And every time one of the kids come out that's with me, I hear, <clears throat> and this discouraging look on her face. I don't pay any attention to it. So one kid comes, you know, what comes out, and uh, he doesn't wash his hands. I tell him, hey, go back in and wash your hands. He goes back in and washes his hands. The lady, Get down to the last kids. 11, 12-year-old come out and the last kid comes out. The lady looks me straight in the face and goes, You know, we teach our kids to wash their hands when they use the bathroom. Unfortunately, I'm not the dullest tool in the shed. I looked her straight in the face and I said, I teach my kids not to piss on their hands. Yep, I quit going to the movies. All right. All right. Speaking of uh, kids, uh, my wife owned a preschool. She's a teacher credential K through 12. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this before. But uh, um, talking about taking kids on field trips. Um, every year for about 18 years, we went to this place called Marine World, <clears throat> Marine World down in the Bay Area. And during the, uh, the summer, we take the older kids to Marine World, I guess. I got that mixed up a little bit, but all right, let me, let me make it a little more. During the summer, when the kids were out of regular school, They would come to the school for daycare. So we were daycare. Big, huge school uh, on four acres. So you have to keep the kids busy. So for about 18, 19 years, we we took them to a place called Marine World down in Vallejo. And uh, me being a photographer, I'm... We, I took the yearly school pictures for the daycare and I'd make these little badges. And then we had shirts made with the school name on it. So when they went on these field trips in the, the, the summer, they'd have to wear the shirt. They had the little badge that had, um, well, back then, you only had one cell phone, had a cell phone number on it, the school name, the child's name, and all information in case they got lost. Now, ow, there's my filler word. So, one year, we decided to go. Now remember, we've did this for 18, 19, 20 years. I have never lost a child. We do this. We go through a thing with the kids about, if you get separated... Uh, don't go look for somebody. Stay right where you're at because I'm going to come back to the last place you were 
to look for you. This has always worked out. Whenever a kid's got separated, it's only been for like three or four minutes. I go back, boom, there they are. This worked out perfect. Now, we took big precautions to make sure these children didn't get lost or separated. Um, we had radios. Um, there was me, my wife. Me, my wife, three teachers, and usually four or five parents that went with us. We all synchronized. We had a plan going on. 20 years, never lost a kid. But there was one time I did. And the child I lost was my child for about five minutes. But remember, he stayed right where he left. A um, security guard came by and said it was going to take him to the uh, to the uh, office. He said, no, I got to stay right where I'm at because my dad will be here any time to find me. I'm not supposed to leave. Security guard even said, that's a good idea. Let me wait here with you. Sure enough, I came by. There he was. 20 years, never lost a kid. And when I do, I lose my own.